As we've seen in the course syllabus, the goal of statistical mechanics is to find a link between the energy function or Hamiltonian of a system and the relation between its thermodynamical quantities. Finding such a connection can sometimes be quite tricky and therefore we'd like to do so as rarely as possible. Luckily, there are some quantities, which we call thermodynamic potentials, from which we can compute most other quantities by simple differentiation. It is these quantities that we will try to relate to our system's Hamiltonian by a statistical average. Which thermodynamic potential we should use will depend on which thermodynamic variables will be the independent variables, that is, will depend on the ensemble. Thermodynamic potentials are conceptually analogous to the potential energy in Newtonian classical mechanics and in electromagnetism. Just like the different components of the force acting on a given system can all be obtained by derivation of the potential energy, so the thermodynamic quantities, like pressure and temperature, can be obtained by a differentiation of a thermodynamic potential. In this video, I'll show you how to derive these thermodynamic potentials from the first two laws of thermodynamics. According to the first law of thermodynamic, when a transformation on a system leads to a variation in its internal energy, which we call Du, this variation can be written as the sum of a heat exchange with the rest of the system, dq, and of work done on a system, dw. According to the second law of thermodynamics, if the transformation is reversible, we can write dq as the product between the system's entropy, s, and the variation in temperature, dt. Furthermore, if our system is a gas, then dw can be written as minus p dv, where p is the pressure and b is the volume. Finally, if the number of particles in our system is not fixed, we can also associate a change of energy to the variation of the number of particles, pn, and to the chemical potential, mu. This means that u is a function of v, s, and n. Dividing by any of the differential dv, ds, and dn, which is equivalent to differentiating with respect to any of these variables while keeping all the others fixed, we obtain minus p, t, and mu. U is therefore a thermodynamic potential. However, it is a very inconvenient one, since it depends on the entropy of the system, which is very hard to measure. As I anticipated in the syllabus, something more relevant to a true experiment is to control the total energy of the system rather than its entropy, together with its volume and its number of particles. In this case, we will be using the microcanonical average, and this framework will be called the microcanonical ensemble. To obtain an expression of S as a function of all the other quantities, we simply solve for it, obtaining ds equals p over t dv minus mu over t dn plus 1 over t du. Therefore, the entropy is a function of u, v, and n. These are also the same quantities that we fix in the microcanonical ensemble. Therefore, it is the function that we want to compute from the Hamiltonian in the microcanonical ensemble. Differentiating the entropy, we can compute all the other thermodynamical quantities. For example, the derivative of S with respect of U, taken while keeping V and N constant, is the inverse temperature, 1 over T. Similarly, ds in dv is p over t, ds in dn is minus mu over t. In the next video, we'll see how to obtain the thermodynamic potentials for the canonic ensemble and for the microcanonic ensemble.